Hi everyone, good morning. It's just after 7 a.m. and I'm excited to show you the May garden, even though May is almost over. I can't believe it's almost over. Um, this month was crazy busy and I didn't have time to really film anything. So uh, yeah, but we're here. So I got my coffee and if I, I my voice sounds a little, um, not woken up because I haven't talked to anyone yet this morning <laughs> except except you guys. So I am excited to show you what's going on in the garden. We have some exciting things. We have some things that are not so exciting, but we're working through. Um, it's been extremely hot here. So I'm in Central Texas Zone 8B and it's like the hottest spring on record. We've hit 100 multiple times and we've been in the high 90s almost the whole time. Um, we finally got a break when it rained the other day. Um, it rained, like it was supposed to rain like three days in a row and it ended up raining for like two hours total. And it cooled down that day to like the 80s. <laughs> but um, it's been really hot and my plants, uh, they struggled a little bit. I've been really trying to keep up with watering and um, it's been fine, but I wish it would rain more. <laughs> so anyways, I'm excited to show you all what's going on and I would love to hear what's going on in your gardens as well. So let's go ahead and get started. On the patio, I'll just quickly show this since I've shown this in most garden tours. I just have my herbs and some native pollinator plants in pots. So I have, I'm gonna have to put my coffee down. Hold on. <laughs> Um, I have Mexican tarragon here, and then I have some thyme, which I've been using a lot in cooking, and it's been really nice. And then I have um, some kind of blue sage, salvia, another uh, salvia plant, and then this one has red flowers, this one has purple flowers, and then oregano, which is was struggling a little bit, but um, I fertilized it, and it seems to be doing better. I think I probably should have put it in a bigger pot this year. Um, and I might do that here in a couple weeks, but it seems to be coming back, so that's good. Here we have a mess, <laughs> but um, I recently got this stevia plant and it has taken off. It was really small when I got it, and um, I actually don't really like the taste of it like plain, but I've heard that if you like take a, a leaf and like put it in a cup of tea, it's pretty good. So I don't know, I was just curious about it, and it's actually kind of a pretty plant so the leaves are kind of nice it kind of looks like mint almost but um yeah it's called stevia and then i also got at the farmer's market i got a moringa tree so i'm super excited about that um i just put it in this pot and a few of the leaves started to yellow so i'm hoping it takes well to this pot but we'll see and then uh this is another salvia and then i'll just show you this is my mess of seedlings so some of them are struggling i'm pretty sure these are eggplants so these actually look pretty good um i've just been neglecting these seedlings i think these are cucumbers which i just reseeded um because no it's not a cucumber i don't think that's a cucumber see i thought i had cucumbers and turns out they were pumpkins um, and it doesn't matter anyways because they got eaten by squash vine borers so i have no cucumbers in my garden so I planted more cucumbers in some of these pots, but now I'm thinking that these aren't even cucumbers. I don't know, guys. Exciting. I planted ginger and it's finally starting to pop up. I just used some store-bought ginger and I planted, I think, maybe like four rhizomes in this pretty big container. And um, I'm excited about that. I've never grown ginger before, um, so we'll see how that goes. But I was kind of getting discouraged because I thought it was, wasn't going to do anything, but there it is but let's get to the main garden the more exciting stuff um i'll show you a full view just so you can see what it looks like i think it looks pretty good i'm struggling a little bit with like how messy it looks and no matter what i do it still looks messy but i don't know i think it's because i just have so many pots and um there's like so many different colors with like the trellising and stuff but i know it doesn't really matter i just like it just bothers me so We'll go ahead and start over here. I got a few new grow bags. So um, I got them from this company called Root Pouch and I think they sell them on the Epic Gardening website. I actually just bought them directly from um, the website. 
Man, I cannot read it. I think it just says rootpouch.com. And it's cool because they're made from recycled materials, like recycled plastic bottles, I think. So, so that's nice. Um, and they are really good quality. Like they're much better quality than like when the pandemic was first starting. I um, bought some grow bags on Amazon and they're like already have holes in them. <laughs> like I just pulled a plant out of one of them and it already has hole, hole in it. And these ones are, I can just tell they're much better quality. So I'm excited about that and the handles are really nice and thick. So um, I'm, this is okra in here. It got a little leggy cause I had it under the, um, the, porch for a while just to keep it moist more moist but um hopefully they'll come back and then i've got some mint that i just moved into this uh, grow bag because it was struggling in the pot it was in it was just way too small and then my blueberries are still looking really nice and green i do have quite a few blueberries on here um not like a not like a million but i'd say i could get a handful there's quite a few in there <laughs> But this is my, I had these plants last year, but this will be my first year getting any blueberries off of them. And um, I think a bird ate most of them, <laughs> but um, I'm excited to have a few. So, and they are also in grow bags and they're in, I think the 20, um, I can't remember if it's the 20 or 25 pound grow bags. So these are the 15 that's a 10 and I think these are 25 so they're pretty big but it's nice because they have the handles on the side so you can move them okay so very excited I bought myself a Mother's Day present of a green stock so I just got this like maybe a week and a half ago it I'm super stoked about it I love it so far um, it's super easy to put together um, shipping was fast it took two and a half large bags of potting mix to fill um like the very large bags so i think it would take about four normal size bags but i've got some sage in here that i moved from a pot this is called new zealand new zealand oh my god new zealand spinach um and it's a heat resistant spinach it's actually not a, technically a spinach but i grew it last year and it survived the whole summer and it's like nice to have a green during the summer um these are micro tomatoes that they're like the little tiny ones that are supposed to be able to grow in the four inch pots or six inch pots so i'm excited to see how those go i've got some swiss chard which i don't know it's like pretty leggy and it's also kind of late in the season to grow it but we'll see and then I've got a little marigold I started from seed. I've got some basil, more basil. And then basically what I've planted in the other pods are green beans and they are just starting to pop up. So I've got some popping up here and, um, oh, there's a nice one right there. So what I was reading about the green stock, so I got the one with the deeper um, containers and it said that you can plant three green bean plants per pod, which is great because I should get a lot of uh, green beans off of them and I was harvesting my other green beans the other day it's so hard to harvest them when they're like in the ground with other plants like it's hard to see and I think this will really help with that because the plants will be like right here you'll be able to see all the green beans so I'm really excited about it and I think it just looks really cute in the garden too so I ended up getting it for like about a hundred dollars which I think is like the cheapest you can get it because I had like a coupon code and it was the Mother's Day sale, but so I just went for it. And then I have my other little raised garden bed here. Um, strawberries, strawberries, strawberries. None of them are really producing and it's probably too late to get much off of it. And then my kale is also struggling a bit, but it's just because it's been hot and it got some pest damage. Um, but I'm just gonna leave it in here because it might be able to come back in the fall. Oh, yeah, see look there's that's my little friend that's eating them Sorry, little guy. I'm not gonna kill you, but you have to go um, He'll come back. Don't worry. <laughs> so um, In the last year in the summer my kale just did the same thing and just didn't do anything and then it just Started growing again in the fall. So I'm just gonna leave it in here and then I also direct sowed some Honestly, I think it's okra because I dropped some seeds on the ground and I just threw them in here. 
it might get way too tall for this container but um and then we have bed number one of the main beds and it's looking a lot better than it did i pulled out the broccoli it never it never headed i was trying to wait for it to flower just because i wanted to see it flower and i wanted to like maybe save some seeds um it just never did it and it was just taking up almost half this bed and i was like okay like i'm wasting all this space and i had this pepper here in a grow bag and it was really struggling to stay moist and it started to develop fruit and the first three fruits that it developed they ended up drying out i mean i was able to use part of them but a lot of them dried out because i couldn't keep the the what are they called grow bags root pouch whatever i couldn't keep it moist enough and i think that's my biggest downfall with those is that you have to water them a lot and once the plant gets really big, it's hard to keep them watered really well. So um, I moved it into the ground here and it seems to be really happy. It's my biggest pepper plant. So I hope it survives. And then I have my lemon balm. I just sowed some calendula seeds here yesterday. Um, and then I have a few zinnias here. My loofah is doing quite well. Look at that. It's all the way up here. I think it's about five, four and a half, five feet tall now. And um, I started these from seed pretty late. Actually, I was kind of worried because I had some other ones from seed. And look how like nice it is. It's like so cool how it does that. Um, I had some other ones started from seed and my toddler helped me plant them and they got broken. So I had to restart the seeds pretty late, but I would say the key to starting loofa seeds is to pre-sprout them and that just really speeds it up. So you can just put them in a damp paper towel for a few days in like a Tupperware container and the seeds will sprout and that really speeds up the process. Um, and then I have some cilantro that is going to seed, which I'm letting go to seed. I mean, I'm letting it, nature's doing it, but I'm not ripping it up. <laughs> so I'm, I want it to go to seed so I can, one, um, attract pollinators and two, maybe save some more seeds to grow more cilantro. And then I have like a random beet down here, which I grew beets in here last fall. Yeah, last autumn. I mean, I've only lived here since October, so it was right after we moved in. Um, and it seems to be like actually developing and I was like kind of surprised because it's been so hot and I thought it would might die, but yeah. And then I have some, another zinnia here. I direct sowed some more zinnias and then I direct sowed some okra here and you guys I'm like the worst at labeling stuff but I think it's okra it's a different variety it's a red a red variety of okra but I'm not 100% sure so and then I got some zinnias as well so this bed is a little bare right now but I think it's really gonna fill up especially once this okra comes in and okra is one of the best things to grow here in the summer because, sorry, I'm trying to see if my husband is coming out here. Anyways, um, it's one of the best things to grow in the summer here because it's just so hot. And then we will move on to bed number two, which is my crazy tomato bed. And I did a lot of work on this the other day because I never trellis these tomatoes. I'm like the worst gardener ever and they were just out of control and i tried a few different trellises and i'm excited about it and i think i might make a separate video all about the different ones that i tried out just because i was curious and i wanted to see what would be best for trellising tomatoes that were already huge like they were already overgrown i did this like two days ago so um i do have some bee balm which is just gorgeous and um, this one's like on the end but sorry it's not focusing but yeah, this stuff is amazingly beautiful and it's supposed to help bring the pollinators in. And then I have some zinnia seeds that I've started. Sorry, I just got a new phone, so I'm trying to make sure I have it focused. And then I've just got some new zinnia seeds in this grow bag here. And I also have a few marigolds in here that I started from seed that are finally coming up. And then here's my massive tomato. <laughs> crazy plan. I still have the tag on that one, but um, we've got a lot of tomatoes in here. These are Romas. They are popping off. Like, wow. 
Look at all of them. There's a ton. I just like load it up. I've never had a tomato plant like this, but I've only ever grown them in containers. So um, this one is probably ready to pick tomorrow, I would say. I could probably pick it today. I might pick it later, but um, we've got like, they're just everywhere. So this is one of the trellises I'm trying out and I would say this is my least favorite. Mm, maybe not, but it's not on the top of the list just because it's so short. And then these are my other trellises that I'm trying out. And this plant was the most wild. It was just taking up this whole bed and I really was able to contain it and it's got a lot of fruit on it as well. Look at all of that. Oh my God, it's gorgeous. These are black crim tomatoes. So we have Roma, black crim. These are yellow pear tomatoes. They are also doing really well. And then down there we have, um, this is the one that I started from seed and I think so. Yeah, I think this is the one that I started from seed. So it's a, I forgot the name of it, but it's just like a red cherry tomato. And then we have this plant, which is probably doing is the same plant. No, this is a different one. I think this is, this one doesn't have any fruit on it yet, I don't think. So I'm not sure the variety of this one, but we'll move on from our crazy tomato -ness. And then here we have um, my sweet peas, which are actually a flower. They're not peas. Um, they're like these cute little, like I don't have any right now. That one just died. But um, they have bloomed a couple of times. I was really about to rip them out. And then one day it came out and there was a little flower on one of them. And I was like, oh. Okay, I won't rip you out yet, but they're they're coming towards the end. They haven't produced much. I think it's just been way too hot for them, but they are looking pretty healthy actually. So I'm gonna leave them on for a little longer and then I will put my cucumbers here once I get those started. And then my green beans are, they're just all throughout the tomato bed, which I showed you last time. And I've already harvested off of them multiple times and they've still got quite a few beans on them. They start looking pretty sad after you harvest off of them a couple times. So they'll probably be taken out pretty soon, which will give the tomatoes more room as well. And then I have a green bean that's supposed to be a climbing one that isn't climbing. And then I have two small watermelon seedlings in here as well. Um, and we'll see if those do anything. And then I have these amazing flowers. I cannot wait till these bloom. Look how gorgeous this is like it's not even bloomed yet and I'm like obsessed with it and then there's another one that's like a darker purple and these are the straw flowers from Baker Creek seeds and they're a variety of colors and I just can't wait like there's like three little buds on there so I'm super excited to see what this looks like when it blooms and they're just so nice and like they're really tall and they have a lot of leaves on them like unlike a sunflower which does have leaves up this whole stalk but these are just like like look at all those like it just looks so good and look how messy my yard is <laughs> but anyways so I just really am happy about those and then we have two grow bags with tomatoes in them they are both not doing I mean this one's doing all right I just haven't really trellised this one they're not like doing so bad they're just really hard to keep moist and so like the leaves are starting to drop. This one might have some kind of virus. I don't know, maybe it does. Mm, sad little tomato. Um, I shouldn't touch anything else now, but this one has some cherries that are like, we've been picking quite a few cherries off of this one. I made some focaccia yesterday with cherry tomatoes on it and um, I used a bunch from this plant. So they're still both producing. So I'm not sure if they're just dried out or if they actually do have some kind of disease or something I will show you my other tomatoes which I have quarantined back here I have two more tomato plants that I have quarantined because I think they might have some kind of disease um, if you see the leaves they're just like not looking great they both have quite a bit of fruit on them so I don't know this one is like really looking bad like look at that like, it looks really bad um, I don't know if it's just been really hot and then got sunburned or what exactly but they still have fruit on them and then this one seems to be like putting off new growth so i'm just gonna leave them and just keep watering them i think it's really they're just drying out in these grow bags and it's like feels like inconsistent watering even though it's not um it's just 
feels like it because they're drying out so fast. So um, I'll show you, I have one more little grow bag here. I just moved this yesterday because it was just getting blasted with the sun and I think it's like got a little sunburn. But these are a winter squash. Um, I'll put the variety on the screen because I can't remember it, but it's like one of those big orange teardrop shaped ones. And I'm gonna put a trellis behind these so that they can trellis up. And then I've got some zinnias in there as well. I put, I planted the polar bear zinnias from Baker Creek Seeds and they're like big white ones. So I'm really hoping that they bloom and I'm excited about that. And Minnie wants to say hi. She was barking this morning. Um, we have some more strawberries and then we have another loofah, which I think I'm gonna actually take these out and put another tomato plant. I have a micro tomato plant in it because these loofahs just, I waited too long to transplant them and they were in like, the, these two were like in the tiny pods. So um, anyways, that will be something else soon. And then I also direct sowed some crookneck yellow squash here, more zinnias, and then these are eggplants. Yesterday I dug up the rest of the tomatoes from, <laughs> tomatoes, I did not dig any tomatoes. I dug up the rest of the potatoes from right here. So I might put something else in here, maybe okra. And then once those green beans are done, the okra can spread out. I might have a lot of okra this year. <laughs> we'll see. But anyways, I've never grown okra before, so I'm going a little crazy. And then I have more zinnias, more cilantro that will go to seed soon. And then my borage, this is very dirty because we were digging up potatoes last night, um, is finally about to flower. And I'm excited because I think borage is beautiful and I've heard that it's a great pollinator. The flowers are also edible. Um, so if you want to eat them, I guess you can. Um, but yeah, and then I have a few more loofahs here, which also aren't doing amazing. I think this bed, it's just not as, this bed has, let me flip you around. So this garden bed here has mostly soil from like a bulk soil delivery that we got. And this is like the bed with the most of that soil. And it was just really bad soil, like really bad. And I didn't really realize it until we had already gotten it and I had already paid for it. So I ended up using it, but I think it just, it was just really bad. And even though I've added compost to this and I've been trying to amend it, um, I think that plants in this bed will struggle for a while um, just because of that soil which is a bummer because I really didn't want to use a bunch of bags of soil um, just because I don't like to use plastic like that but I read a ton of reviews on bulk soil places this was the one with the best reviews and I got it it was full of trash it was full of glass um, so yeah kind of a bummer on that one but I think other areas maybe have better options or if you're in Austin and you know of a better option um, leave it in the comments below so that other people can find that resource because it does suck to have to buy like so many bags of soil and then you just dump them in and you know I try to use the bags for other things like putting trash in and stuff but I still feel bad about it but I tried the more eco-friendly option and it didn't work for me so that is why I think some of the plants in this bed are struggling a little bit um, or just like having a hard time taking off I did get some potatoes but the harvest was nowhere near what I wanted but I think um, it went through a pretty bad freeze the potato plants and so i think that stunted them a lot um and then it just seems like maybe it's lacking nitrogen because stuff is yellowing quite a bit in here so i'm gonna try to amend it i'm waiting for my worm castings to be ready i'm i don't know if i've talked about that on here but anyways i have a little worm farm so i'm gonna hopefully add some worm castings to this bed and then hopefully that will help with that but yeah, that's what's going on in this bed it's looking better i would say like seedlings sprout really well in here but then they just seem to have a hard time taking off so i'm not sure exactly what's going on but hopefully uh stuff will take off in here and fill out a little bit and then this is my last bed this is a newer raised bed that we actually set up together and put all these tomatoes and peppers in so they were planted quite a bit later than wait this isn't my last bed i have more sorry <laughs> anyways we planted these tomatoes and peppers in together and um, 
it was quite a bit later than the other tomatoes and so they're quite a bit smaller um, and I need to figure out trellising for some of them um, I also want to move this bed which I don't know if it's possible because this area of the yard this corner of the yard gets sun the longest of any parts of my yard I looked at it yesterday and it basically got sun for almost 12 full hours and it is very hot and the sun is very hot and I think these plants are just getting blasted with the sun and it's funny because when I've gardened in my apartments my main issue was lack of sun so I just thought I'm gonna put all my stuff in the sunniest spots and that's not necessarily the best idea here in Texas because stuff just gets blasted with it so we do have some peppers coming in um, and then we've got some tomatoes these are San Marzano I picked a couple yesterday and then these are bumblebee tomatoes so I'm excited to try those out and I think those are also San Marzano but I think that that's the main reason these plants are not really taking off they're just really hot during the day and it just stunts their growth and growth and then I think it's causing some of the blossoms to fall off which I'm not having that issue in my other beds which are a little more shaded so we'll see I might put a shade cloth up but I would rather move it since we have natural shade in our yard um we'll see so some of my peppers are finally taking off they took a while I put them out way too early and they got cold so they got a little stunted like especially that little guy um, but like look at these green beans like that is for sure sunburn right or am i wrong i might be wrong but that looks like sunburn to me so maybe if you guys have any other ideas of what's going on in this bed let me know but i think it's just getting blasted by the sun so hopefully my husband and i can move it i think it's really heavy so we'll see but if not i'll put some kind of shade cloth like here or something um so if you all have any suggestions of a good shade cloth to use uh for texas for very hot climates let me know so i can figure that out and we can walk back to the very back wild jungle bed and it really is a wild jungle out here we have not mowed at all um i just came out here yesterday and weed eated around here and like kind of a little path for me to walk because we just have so many wildflowers right now and I don't want to disturb them. Like, look at, there's already a, there's a little bee right there. I don't know if you saw it. Um, they're like the native bees and they're not like honey bees. So it makes me like so happy when I see those. But basically what's going on back here is poison ivy everywhere. Look at this. You guys, it's covered in poison ivy. This is all poison ivy, poison ivy, poison ivy, all the way back there. And it's like encroaching on my bed. And <laughs> look, so last night, I'm an idiot. I came out here in shorts. See the poison ivy leaves right there? I came out here in shorts and I weed eat it here. And it was just flying at my legs. And I was like, oh my gosh, what am I doing? This is, this is not good. And so I... I just finished up really quick and went inside and took a shower. And I, oh, look, guys, look at this. Little bee, little bee pollinating my little flower. Oh, wow. Oh, there's another one. He's like, hey, get out of my flower. I was, I was using that one. That's so beautiful. But anyways, so I was just flinging poison ivy everywhere. It was all over my legs. I was like, oh my gosh, I have to take a shower. But I see you fine this morning. So I don't think I'm actually allergic because I've definitely walked in it a few times and nothing's happened. But um, I need to figure that out. I think I'm going to take the lawnmower to it and just mow, mow back there. And then I might spray some like, I was reading online that you can spray like salty water, salty soapy water on it to kill it off. Because um, I really don't want to spray anything, especially near my my garden bed so um i came out here last night and did some work on it as well and unfortunately i had some casualties in here um to squash bugs i do not like squash bugs i was out here picking off eggs for a, two weeks every day picking off the eggs and they still killed my plants so this one i think is not going to make it as well you can see like all the damage on the plant from the 
squash, but like, look at that. That's so gross. <laughs> anyway, um, I think I'm going to rip this one out too, but I just wanted to give it a day. This guy might, these two might make it just because they were more established. But from everything I know is that basically the squash bugs will destroy. They're actually like the babies of the squash bugs and they'll destroy down here and then the plant can't get water. So I don't know if these are going to make it. They've still been flowering. I haven't gotten any fruit on them yet. My watermelon is taking off. It's all the way there. It's all the way over there. It was like going into the poison ivy. I was like, oh my gosh, no, no, no. We can't have watermelons and poison ivy. But anyways, and then we have a lot of marigolds. That marigold is looking beautiful, that one. I planted all these marigolds. I planted a bunch from seed as well, which are um, starting to even flower, the ones that I planted from seed. And I planted all these marigolds to keep this squash bugs away and it didn't help but <laughs> they look really pretty so I got like dirt all over them so my plan is in this empty area I'm gonna come out here and remove the poison ivy with gloves of course and probably rip this guy out and then I'm gonna plant something that loves heat out here um don't hate me but I might say okra <laughs> because I don't know what else to plant um that is heat loving that I might plant another melon actually I don't I have seeds for a, a yellow uh, petite watermelon that I might plant out here. Um, so maybe I'll do that. Maybe this will be my melon bed and I might plant some more zucchinis so that I can get a later season one. Um, can turn you around. I don't know if it's better to like talk my face or talk the garden, but anyways, I might plant those petite yellow melons because this is a Moulin Rouge. A uh, large red watermelon this one that I actually have two plants in here um, so I might do melons out here and then I will probably do another round of zucchini I have those yellow squash but I like zucchini so I'll probably try to plant some more zucchini um, because I heard that later in the season the pests aren't as crazy I've only I've never grown zucchini in Texas before and I did not know that squash bugs were so insane and they are like it was like Really, I picked those little eggs off for two weeks and they still kill my plants. So anyways, that is pretty much what I have going on. I have some flowers in the front, but I'm not gonna show you that because I'm literally not dressed right now. I don't wanna go outside. I don't wanna go in the front yard, but that is all I have in my garden. I think most things are doing pretty well. Um, this is my first year like really gardening in a garden besides like containers in an apartment um i mean i've had like a few small tomato gardens in my like, childhood but nothing like this so i definitely am learning a lot and um it's been a lot of fun it's really humbling as well but i'm having fun i need to go get my coffee it's very early so um i hope you all enjoyed my garden tour and i would love to know what you're growing in your garden um i can't wait for more things to start ripening so i can start harvesting things and oh i actually have sweet potato st slips started so i will probably do sweet potato slips in one of those beds or maybe grow backs i don't know i'll probably make i'm gonna make a separate video about sweet potatoes and sweet potato slips um but i do have that and that is another hot weather crop that you can grow here and i grew them last year and they did great in the summer so um anyways i hope you all have a great day and i hope it's not so hot where you live and you can get outside and enjoy the weather a little bit and enjoy the garden so have a great day talk to you later